I have always wanted to have a vat thing just like you. Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome to another scintillating episode of Picks from the Print Mine, where we talk about the latest goodies in the Goodman Games store. And today we have a very special episode for you. We are covering the DCC adaption of Jack Vance's Dying Earth. And this is going to be good. Oh, God, that was awful. Could, I'm going to take it again from um, from today's episode. I'll just, just do it again. Today's episode, we're covering Jack Vance's Dying Earth for the DCC RPG. And it is going to be really nice. Oh, I think that was worse. Let me let me try it one more time. I'll get it this time. Ha. Huh. <clears throat> okay, today we are covering Jack Vance's Dying Earth for the Dungeon Crawl Classics RPG, and it is going to be Sisquipedidlian Nashnakalangalanthaniishtisnickly. Ah, uh, let's face it, you're no Jack Vance. But I want to be Jack Vance. If you want to be Jack Vance, you'll have to do what he did. Get what do you to do? work! Oh, okay, I'm off! Hey, oh. John. Hey, Dieter. How's, How's it going? going? I asked you first. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's busy. It's been busy. How about you? Uh, same. Very, very same. Very same. It's like there's a whole bunch of conventions coming up at once or something. Uh, yeah, and, and lots of other things happening and stuff. Have you gotten any gaming crammed into small uh, a gaps bit, of a time? Bit, or... A little bit. Yeah. Um, but my group started playing Legend of the Five Rings recently, so I played that a couple times now. That's been fun. It's a it's a good game. It's is a that? Hard. Yeah. Is that a new a new version of that, or you're playing an older version? I, I know there's been a couple it's different. The, it's the iterations. newest of her, a version. I don't know how new it is. There seems to be quite a few supplements for it already, but right. Uh, but yeah, right, it's very right. much, it's very much um, not DCC. <laughs> Correct. Correct. I I think I uh, I know I was introduced to that, but I can't remember if it was like the D20 version way back or some other version. I don't remember. Yeah, the, the, we're so playing long. the Fantasy Flight version that uses special dice. Oh, okay. Like the but, the same weird dice as like the Star Wars game and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't played the okay. Fantasy Flight I, version of that. Maybe, maybe then. Yeah. No, I like I like that system for they have for Star Wars, so maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. It's not, what not about really you? You do any, uh, any, any tonight. Other? Tonight, I'm hoping to finish uh, uh, what I have called Intrigue of the Fey Sisters. And the third adventure of that is the Fey Sisters Fate from Goodman Games. Oh. Um, but I'm not holding my breath that we're actually going to finish it because it's the whole thing is take. I thought the whole thing would be about 12 sessions for the whole campaign. And I think this is like the 20th session or something like oh, that. Oh, wow. Okay. So. <laughs> um, but it might, we might wrap it up tonight. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. They have a big, a big fight with some frog people and, uh, some other things left over from earlier in the campaign that, uh, gotta they didn't love, quite mop up. Yeah, gotta love those frog people. Well, and, and the fungal threat thing from, um, uh, the Forgotten Hive is kind of like, they didn't oh. really polish that off. So that's kind of coming back to haunt them, but. Hopefully they're not watching because they don't know that that's happening yet. Uh -huh. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, speaking of busy and gaming, those yeah. things put together mean what? Conventions? What. Conventions, yes. I'm going to a convention, convention. this week. You're going to a convention this week. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of conventions. Well, we're not just going; we're working at them. I believe. Well, yes, working. Well, I mean, why? I don't go unless I'm working. <laughs> That's in your contract. I'm not attending your convention for fun, sir. <laughs> um, so yeah. I, then... I am gonna, I'm gonna be at uh, MomoCon in Atlanta. Uh, 
Brendan is going to be there running games. Um, Thorne is nice. going to be there, and uh, I think that's I think that's all the famous people, really. Um, but we're gonna have a Maybe big a booth. little sky I'll, of I'll, I'll going booth. on. Right, right. I will be at KublaCon south of San Francisco in Burlingame and uh, have a big booth there too. And I, I don't think I have any luminaries running things, but there may be other people running things. Doing doing a fine job of it, no doubt. It doesn't require sure. luminaries. No, it absolutely doesn't. They not. just, yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 just uh, uh, command more attention, I guess. Brendan's got his groupies. Yeah, I'm, hundreds I'm a, of people I'm following a him around at the convention. What's that? I'm a Brendan groupie. You're a, you're one of the groupies. Okay, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. I could yeah yeah I, if I yeah if he was running stuff, I'd be trying to get in on it. <laughs> so yeah, and then. Just for reference, we 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 do we go off, we do our shows in various locales, and then and then next week we're back here doing this again. Yes, we're going to do another episode of this next Wednesday after we get back. Um, since today is a special All Dying Earth episode, we have to come back next week to talk about all the other stuff that's new. Right, right. Some of which is already released, but or maybe all of which, yeah. But we got we got to get we got to get caught up here. So do we? Uh, should we just get into it then? Yeah, let's let's get into it. Um, briefly, I want to mention these things. If you're new to, I don't know, can we get the? I don't know. Those just look black when I hold them up, but they're purple. I don't know if I can turn them. There oh, we go. Yeah, you kind of see they're purple. They're dark purple. Um, so if you're new to DCC and you're jumping in because of Dying Earth, you might need some weird dice to play DCC with. And these are packs of purple or black. Take your pick and uh, you get filled in on the weird dice. You know, you've already got your D8s and your D12s. Well, this is give you your D7s and your D16s and all that good stuff. D24, uh, seven dice, 11 bucks. They're in the online store. Get them if you need them. Get them for friends. They make a nice little gift. But it's not Christmas wanna, time, but you, you can wanna, put them in a sock. If you want to invest a little more in your dice and get some special Vancean dice for your Dying Earth game, there's also a set of DCC dice for Dying Earth. Ooh, yeah, Ooh. stones. Fancy. And uh, they're the colors. Again, I don't know how well the colors are going to show up here, but... They're the colors of the actual. No, that doesn't work, does it? Let me, not, let me not turn very this well. lantern to the side here. Maybe that'll show it off a little better. They're the colors of the Ion Stones from the books and the stories and the tales. Now, uh, there, there's a little uh, special contest going on with these dice too. That's right. Um, so, like, what a total of ten? I think ten sets out of all the dice we produced. Ten sets have uh one die that is a little different and if you right. have one of those sets you show, send us pictures at info at goodmangames.com and uh then we give you prizes or something right? yeah yeah the die so the dice are in pairs they're they're color matched in pairs and i don't know if this is is that showing up as glow yeah. it's a little bit glowy yeah, yeah. so it, like most of the sets will have a pair of these glow dice but if your pair, it may not be this size of a die even, but if your pair has one of these glow dice and then one that's translucent, like you can see right through it, that's one of the winning that's prize. Winning. And yes, uh, I think we, we, have, we have located uh, a couple winners, but that's it. There's still, still several sets out there somewhere. Yeah, seven or eight tubes are still out there waiting to be discovered. And if you're within the sound of our voice, you now know all about it and can uh, check your dice if you already have them or maybe make a purchase and see what you get or haunt your local retailer and see if they happen to, I mean, the tubes, you can see into the tube. I mean, 
that's the reality of it, right? That is. That is. So, dying earth. Just a little set. thing. A little is, set. A little box set. It is not a little. No. No. It's big. I mean, the box is actually fairly thin, but that box is crammed. Like, there is no extra room in that box for anything. It is full to the brim um, of dying earth good goodness. Um, I don't... I. I'm not sure where I put my map. Maybe it's actually in the box. I was going to show the off map, the map. The map is fantastic. I love the map. Um, I a, just a nice realized I didn't Doug, have it on. Doug Kovacs map of the dying earth. Don't want to crinkle it. There we go. Nice big map. Suitable for framing. An integral feature of the box set with strange personages thereupon and numerous locales to visit, strange birds to meet. Um, yeah, so you got the nice map. And that's about it, right? That's pretty much. That's, yeah, just, just an empty box with a map. A box, box with a map. No, 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 no. There's, there are three different books in the box describing the setting in various ways. There's the player's book that has uh, some new classes and wait 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 wait, wait. we got we we got to go fancy in with this it's not the player's book it's the player's librum oh yes I'm sorry player's librum uh, fancy word for book 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 why is it uh, why, why is there not a fancy word for player oh that's a good point. Stomp the uh, typo. We got to send that in, and maybe they'll change it in a new printing. Anyway, the the player's librum has uh, several new classes in it. Correct. Um, I don't well, have it four. right. I don't have it right in front of me. Four, four new okay. classes. It also generally covers the setting, like the timeline and the prominent uh, uh, features of the setting, the locale, geography, uh, personages, I believe. Right. But and, yes, it uh, details four new classes. And um, un unlike Lankmar, uh, Dying Earth does start at level zero with a funnel. So there is an occupation table as well. Yes, you could be an anthropophage. Yes. Oh. Or an embalmer. I am both of those things. Really? I don't Are you I also was, a lobster I don't think I was supposed to say that out loud, but... How about a sprawling costermonger? Mm, a vat no. thing foundling? No. These are all just adjectives for you, right, Dieter? I mean, it's just. I mean, yes, I. It's, they they every, got this every list. Every word in that book describes me. <laughs> That's right. A bobble thief. A syncretic <laughs> heretic. <laughs> um. So yeah, where, where to begin? What else with is in there, John? What's that? What else is in there? Anything interesting? Uh, well, I was going to say the four classes, uh, I was just going to do some little shout oh, yeah. outs on what I thought was cool about each of the classes. Like the magician appeals to me a lot. I, it's more complex than the wizard. I'm not going to lie and say I have my head fully wrapped around it, but I kind of like what I was reading and uh, would love to try it in practice. I, I learn things best by practice, you know, so right. playing right. it a couple of times, I'd get, I'd get the hang of it. Uh, one of the things I liked, um, was they have that like reincarnation thing. So when they get to zero hit points, they may not be dead. They may reincarnate. Good times. Yeah. And, and so the uh, magician is, uh, broadly speaking, uh, analogous to the wizard in DCC. But you can still, you can still play a regular DCC wizard in Dying Earth also. You can, you can. Oh, that, yeah, that actually brings you back in relation to the classes, the book kicks off discussing um, how to adapt the regular DCC classes to Dying Earth or not. And one of the options, an optional rule is for warrior magicians, which is essentially a variant of the warrior from DCC where they get a little bit of magic and their, their, um, their hit points are a little lower, but it's a, it's a nice trade-off. It's a nice, uh, a nice little option. 
that also I would enjoy playing. But yeah, I don't know. Did anything particularly jump out from the magicians to you? Uh, not, not, not particularly. Just their uh, their their spell casting works a little differently than the standard wizard. Like they're more uh, a little more reliable, I guess. Like in in the sense that uh, how, how does it work exactly? You you make your spell check roll when you learn the spell. Yeah, you learn and, the spell you... at a particular result. Like you know the fourteen to seventeen result or the eighteen to twenty result. And that's where you cast it from all the time. But as you level up, and there are actually some variations where you can play around with this, but the default is when you hit your next level, you then get to re-roll that and see if you get something better. Um, but if you fail on that check, I can't remember exactly what it does, but it basically then you have not not corruption, but it's like complications similar oh, yeah. to corruption yeah. that kick in and and you know cause you grief you know because like you're you're messing around with magic it's just how it is right right so what else we got other classes uh the vat thing the, the vat. interesting thing to me about the vat thing is it's kind of like a jack of all trades kind of class because they roll all their skill checks, for example, on a D16, regardless of whether you consider it trained or untrained or anything else. So they've got that going for them. Um, they also have a thing where if they die, they may not be dead because there may be matter left in the vat that they came from that another one could spring up and like you have a duplicate or like a clone kind of like a thing, a you know, so like, almost like paranoia. paranoia. Yeah. yeah 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 it's like the memories shoot to that little remnant that's still alive and then it emerges and runs around um yeah and they there's like three different variants of that thing so there's even more variety within the class itself um then there's the wayfarer um the wayfarer is the class that has all the weird luck manipulation stuff going on like everybody else has got you know oh, i burn luck it's two points i get a plus two and then the wayfarer has all kinds of things going on like if they're spending more than one luck point at a time it it's escalating for each point of like what comes out of that oh right okay so if cool. they spend one it's just one but if they spend two then they're rolling dice and it, the die goes up the more they spend kind of thing and i'm trying to remember there was something else Oh, I can't quite remember how it worked, but there was something about, um, oh, if other people are spending luck in in proximity to a Wayfarer, the luck might come from the Wayfarer instead, or it might just go away from the person and not add to their role. Oh, okay. And instead goes to the, I think it then goes to the Wayfarer. So it's like the Wayfarer's luck is bound to be just bouncing around the whole time. That sounds like fun. And and you could decide to spend luck and then suddenly you don't get that bonus, but the Wayfarer has your luck and yeah. And, and they have a rhetorical deed, which sounds very fancy and do a little fast talking, a little flim flam um and then there's witches is the fourth class and they have um like pacts and rituals and like making pacts with like demons and what was the other thing oh and they have like a healing ability so there's not a cleric per se unless you're importing one from standard dcc but the the witches have like some ability to like pull life force from one source and put it somewhere else so uh they can they can kind of do some healing and if and if you only have the party around to draw from you might be like trading hit points among the party or something i may not have that exactly right because again i i uh, learned I mean, it I mean, by it's, doing it's okay. it but i it's think okay it's they pull it from something ghosty squid is 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 in the chat mm. correcting giving the names correcting everything that you say is wrong so it's good all right it's great when the people watching know more about it than we do. And I got it all wrong because I want to make sure I'm perfect. <laughs> Everything is wrong. So, Everything um, you know is wrong. It, it also uh, introduces optional rules for grudge tokens. Oh, yes. 
which uh, are kind of like the opposite of fleeting luck tokens from Lankmar, I suppose. Um, yeah, you could you could look at them that way. Um, as as you uh, go through your adventures and you start having rivalries with people and resenting people for doing bad things to you, you can get grudge tokens, which you then uh, spend to, I believe you you uh, make make things harder for the character you have a grudge against, basically. You you force them to re-roll a success. And it could be could be the judges made a roll that turned out well and you just throw out a token and make them re-roll it. Or it could be a, another player. And I know if you spend more than one, you're then pushing them down the dice chain or or worsening them on the dice chain for whatever it is they're rolling to like make it harder to even get a success, you know? Right. Um, yeah, I'm blanking on exactly what is it when you, I think it's when you fumble, you get a, a grudge token? I, I believe that's how it works, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you fumble something, you get a grudge token, and then you could cause somebody else to fail also. And again, very, very fancy and very, how, how do you say, how do you say that guy's name? Do you say Kugel or Cudgel or? I usually say Kugel, but I don't Kugel. know. I thought that was like a cake or something. I've always said cudgel because it sounds like a blunt I instrument. But, but, but I you know, I, I, I will take this opportunity to confess that I've never read them. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So I haven't read all of it, but I've read, I guess, the first two books. It took me forever to even find the other ones, which is weird because they're more recent. But anyway. Anyway, um, um, also in the box. I have to read this because I can. Oh. There's no way I could memorize it. The intimate anatomy of several creatures and personages of the 21st eon. With a nice uh, Errol Otis cover. There. Yeah, I was going to say a lovely Errol Otis cover there on the front. I don't know if I something strange about my lighting today. I can't get the covers to light up, but you can see the sparkly, sparkly Ooh. foil uh, logo. And and this book is uh, basically exactly what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> well, it has patrons. Patrons. It Monsters. has um, talisman amulets and instruments, both minor and major, which has got some really cool stuff in it. Um, then there's the monstrous creatures and all that sort of thing, uh, as well as like people. Like, you know, the just kind of ordinary populace, like in the back of the DCC rule book, there's the, what is the section? Men and magicians or something like that. Something. Three or four, three or four pages of like, this is a bandit and that kind of thing. Oh, right. Yeah. Your basic, your basic NPCs. Yeah. 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 You just need something, some stats real quick. You can grab something. Um, there's also games of chance as played in the 40, 41st, 21st, 21st day on. Uh, and what, uh, there was something else I was going to mention. And I don't, I don't remember. Maybe it'll come back to me. But yeah, there's some nice art. And uh, yeah, then finally, there's the primer of practical magic, which, you know, just, again, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It just describes how the magic stuff in the game works. Um, there's a lot of spells, 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 yeah, it's mostly spells, and a few more spells. There's also curses. Don't forget the curses. Oh, curses. Yes, that's important. And... Uh, uh goes it goes into the witch packs and stuff like that in a little more detail oh and the spell provenance which is sort of like the mercurial magic equivalent more or less uh now like what, what may be what may be my favorite thing though here here oh go ahead Go ahead. I was just going to read out a good one and a bad one. Like a good one's created this spell, added a reinforcing resonance, doubling the duration of any effects. And then a bad one, uh, 
The caster of this spell has their nose elongated by one inch by a mischievous meddling, a mischievous maddling each time the spell is cast. Fantastic. Like Pinocchio effect, I guess. But uh, the thing I like, each each of the books also on the back has oh, a yeah. 100 table. Uh, there's 100 noteworthy airs and allurements. 100 magician quirks. And 100 unusual landmarks. That's so right. You, uh, need some sudden inspiration. Um, now, an interesting thing I noticed the back, there's also each book is individually priced. Did you notice that? I did, but I don't really understand it. I mean, I, I guess, either. I mean, I know like anytime we've done a box set, there's always like, boxes that are damaged in shipping or whatever that get to the warehouse and it's like okay well the contents are okay but the box is scratched up or whatever so it may just be proofing it against when when we get to the tail end of the run that there'll be kind of odds and ends and they'll have a price on them that that could be all right so that's the box set how much is the box set john uh 60 60 dollars so if you buy them individually stuff. it's it's for sixty dollars, but or something. But there's yeah. more. What? Not in, the, not in the box set, but more that you can get. There's adventures also. Oh, that is true. There are nine adventures you can get, and a, a tenth one is, uh, I think, in pre-order status right yeah, now. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. So uh, let's start with uh, Dun Dungeon Crawl Classics: Dying Earth Number Zero, Pilgrims of the Black Obelisk. Now this is a level zero funnel. And uh, basically, the, the premise of this whole adventure is that you uh, there's a religious pilgrimage departing to a holy city. And uh, you, you may or may not be religious, but uh, traveling the dying earth is dangerous. So you, you gather in numbers. If there's a pilgrimage going somewhere and you want to go there, you just go with the pilgrimage. Um, and you face all sorts of trials along the way and... Uh, eventually get to the black obelisk where the the pilgrimage is headed to and you may or may not find out some interesting things about the religion depending on what you do uh that's as much as i can say about spotting um yeah but it's, but it's uh, the the adventure does have kind of a it's it's got some replay value in that um you find out that there are three different routes that will get you to the obelisk and depending on which route you choose kind of determines which encounters you get along the way. Ah, so you could, oh. so is it a different enough you could run it for the same group like later on down the line? Like it's been oh, a I, year. I think there's, 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 there's like two or three encounters that you get no matter which way you go. But but the okay. other the other encounters are, are different based on which path you choose. So if you're a, a D, uh, if you're a dying earth judge and you want to run that multiple times, you're not going to get tired of it because. Well, and, unless, unless all, you run it three times for three groups and they all choose the same path, but you know. they all go the same way. <laughs> well, but then even then, this, I mean, I, I've certainly run things that I've run them a dozen times and they're fun every time just because of well, the great different stuff. DC, to play. It's so unpredictable. So unpredictable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, moving on to. Uh, number number one. one, The Laughing Idol of Larshan, a level one adventure by Julian Burnick um, with a great Errol Otis cover. Um, this one uh, basically starts with a uh, quest. Your character, for whatever reason, personal reasons, is trying to find a bottle of this rare brand. And you, you find out that uh, the brandy is, at least like, wait, am I thinking of the right adventure? Hold on. Now I have to check. I have to check. Priceless bottle of locally made yes, brandy? Yes. Okay. Phew. All right. <laughs> I know how you feel. I, I read them all in one <laughs> afternoon, and now I'm, they're kind of blurred in my... <sighs> Uh, but they, yeah, they they arrive at this village looking for brandy just in time to uh, have the the giant demon idol that is on top of the temple shout, "Hey, you're late with your sacrifice, people! Stuff's gonna get bad real fast." <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. That's not exactly what it says, but you know, 
Yep. Yep. <laughs> and th- and then the calamity and mayhem ensue, right? Exactly. Exactly. All right. So that's number one. We had what? Number zero. Number one. Then there's number two. Shockingly, two comes after one. Uh, the Sorceress Tower of the Sanguine Slant. Uh, so herein we have an adventure uh, uh, where a mysterious tower has appeared. Um, and uh, of course, you know, as adventurers are wont, uh, there may be uh, treasures and valuables and magical knowledge therein. So you investigate, there are various dangers, there are various mysteries. Um, Lots of magical stuff in here. There's some good um, like social interaction opportunities, you know, so it's not just all stomping down corridors and and fighting stuff. And uh, there's even a little dancing involved. If, if uh, you know, you wanna bring your dance shoes to the game table, this is your adventure. You've been waiting for this opportunity to bust out your dance moves. Um, and this is uh, this is a level two. Level two adventure. Who, who wrote that one? Uh, this is from Terry Olson. Terry Olson. Okay, cool. Mr. Terry Olson, right there. Um, let's see. Moving on to number would three. Would three be next? Three would be next. If we're going in yeah. order, we don't have to go in order. We could um, though. The magnificent machinations at the grand exposition of marvels Ooh. by a level three adventure by Bob Brinkman. So this, uh, basically the premise of this one is the the grand exposition of marvels is happening where, you know, all sorts of people bring their cool magic things that they've built and show them off. Uh, but, but one item that was supposed to be shown off here has been stolen and it's up to you to steal it back basically. Um, and and this this adventure is really, fun i think because uh, the first half of the adventure um is very free form it's just you you are going around the city talking to people and finding out what they know um assuming you know you're you're not complete murder hobos you could do the whole first half with no combat at all right um, so it's it's got a lot of great role playing opportunities with with pretty detailed npcs and then, uh, then eventually, theoretically, you find out where the crystal is, and you have to go get it. And then it becomes more your standard dungeon crawl sort of adventure. Right, right. Then you have the, right. the action quotient of. The but if you, if you if you like adventures with a lot of talking, investigation, role playing, this is definitely one for you. All right. I I do like that. I guess that I, one is for me. I thought you might uh fourth or fifth but it's number four because we started with zero i i i didn't promise at the beginning there wouldn't be math involved so there may be math involved um this is the mind weft of the moonstone palace oh. and, and am i wrong is is that kind of a does that look like a little bit like daniel bishop a little bit a little bit Kind of thought that from the first time I saw that image, I didn't. I didn't think it was likely that San Julian based it on Daniel Bishop, but I you can't of a Daniel Bishop vibe. Um, so here's one that's uh, especially bad if you're playing a magician because magicians are going missing. They're just boop, disappearing. Nobody knows what's going on. Um, and there is a a once destroyed palace that has been restored may be connected to these disappearances. I assume that would be the Moonstone Palace? Perhaps the Moonstone Palace. I don't know if you saw that. Do you see that? Uh, Yeah, yeah. Moonstone Palace. That's a, that's a a palace that is uh, under a, I don't know. So it's got a Moonstone. It's under a Moonstone. We don't know what the Moonstone is. That would be too spoilery. Um, But it, it poses especially as an especial challenge for magicians because of the disappearance and the dangers for relating to them. Um, it involves a little time travel. 
it involves a funhouse mirror room that does weird things. Um, you know, if if you like a game where you know the the can't predict what's going to happen quotient is bumped up, you know, to eleven. Ah, okay. This one. This one. Especially with the time travel in there, right? Right. Now, uh, moving on to number five, Penumbra of the Polar Ape, a level five adventure by Harley Stroh. Uh, this is this is a fun little adventure where uh, you uh, it, the spellcasters in your group get invited to come um, audition, basically, for a, a powerful association. And uh, all you have to do to prove your worth is do this one little task. Um, it turns out that there is a uh, small moon headed toward the planet, and uh, you have to go check it out. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> right, right, right. What, what, what could go wrong? So, so in this adventure, you actually go, you leave the planet and go to a moon, a small moon, that... Uh, conveniently uh, is mapped uh, on a 20-sided spherical surface so you can if, if you wanted to uh, yeah if you wanted to nobody screen grab copy, that copy copy the map and That's actually nice. fold it into a globe you could do that <laughs> nice. Um, nice and yeah it's a and then of course you know as 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 usually happens you find out that things are not what they seem to be and that's all I can really say about that. Yeah, yeah. It, it it's it's sometimes a little painful to cover adventures cuz <laughs> like the coolest thing about the adventure is the thing you can't say cuz you don't want to spoil it. Um seventh we have the great this punt. Um as you might well, number guess, 6. Seventh module. Number 6. Number 6. Yeah. Seventh module, number 6, second level uh what is that 12 or zero i can't i can never tell when there's a zero involved um so this is a, a a short and sweet adventure um i would probably nominate this one uh more or less as the the most likely candidate if you're looking for a short convention session type of dying earth adventure um it, it it's a simple hunt for a for a reward you know um and there's some there's some uh, potential social shenanigans. So again, it's not just uh, uh, tromping through the woods and 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 like fighting stuff. Um, and there seems to be a theme here because there's a little more than meets the eye, but we can't really say what. Can't can't talk about it without spoilers. That that would be bad to say too much. But. Um, yeah, like I say, it's this is altogether what uh, twelve pages, something like that. Um, probably a very good candidate if you're running at a convention or, or similar kind of setting where you have a limited amount of time. It might even fit in like a three hour slot. I'm not sure. Haven't run it, but from looking it over, I think I think you could do it in a short in a short turnaround if you had to. Fantastic! I always I always love those nice one session adventures. Yeah, it's a nice, uh, not a palate cleanser. It's not the word I'm looking for, but you know, just a change of pace instead of a longer adventure and you have a shorter right. adventure and mix it up. So number seven, Phantoms of the Ectoplasmic Cotillion. Cotillion, is that how you say that word? I don't even yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, level three adventure by Bob Brinkman. And this one is a, it's just a pretty straightforward dungeon crawl when it gets down to it. It doesn't waste a lot of time with with setup or backstory. Basically, you have just heard about a magic ring that can overcome death itself, and it is hidden in the subterranean layer of some long dead magicians, and you decide to go get it. Because why not? Because, yeah, because overcome death. Who doesn't want to do that? What else are you going to do? Yeah, I like that doesn't waste time line you had. Isn't that kind of like the original DCC? promo line of yeah like, basically, doesn't yeah. waste time with long setups and boring exposition just gets right into the adventure uh so let's get right into number eight our ninth uh adventure for today and the the for now the final of the dying earth adventures 
Um, this involves a a sick house, but it's not it's not a house for the sick, and it's not a sick house like you know you've got mold in the walls or something it's actually a house that's alive that's sick and uh it is doing things to try to make itself better but that's having repercussions and that's how the the uh the party gets involved and there's a um there's an extraterrestrial element to this one as well like you were saying you know, there's the adventure where you go to the moon or whatever like this also has like an extraterrestrial thing like you are not on earth anymore you are somewhere else altogether. Um, and and that particular element, uh, there's there's room to play around with that if you're so inclined and extend it. If you want to take you use this as a launching pad, this is a, uh, a level three adventure. So maybe you've played from zero to three in Dying Earth and you want a total change of pace and you want to go to America or uh, wherever you want to go. You could employ this to get there and do that if you so were so inclined. Um, yeah. So again, I, I I'd love to say more. Don't think I should. Hopefully, that's enough to 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 pique your interest. My interest is piqued. So, uh, one thing I I want to mention um, for people who may not be really familiar with Dying Earth at all, like me. <clears throat> um, is that uh, all of these <laughs> all of these adventures can be used really well in just in just a standard DCC campaign as well? Like there's that's true. They're 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 not so out there that they don't you know they don't fit with regular DCC, and uh, and at least the ones I read, you don't really need to know any of these special dying earth rules to run them. So right, particularly if you're running. Um... You know a kind of a sandboxy dcc thing where it's like well hey let's go over those mountains and nobody knows what's over those mountains right. and you could throw a couple of these like well this is what it's like over there and just throw in those adventures and like we're going on a wisp hunt or a this punt well what is a visp like well don't you know everybody knows what a visp everybody is. knows what a visp is Jeez. Yeah, yeah we're we're from yeah. way over there we don't know and yeah i mean you could totally do that and i will say just briefly each of those adventures are 10 bucks a pop Right, as usual. If you're looking to pick any of them up. Um, so that's all the dying earth stuff that we have right now, right? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. I can't think of anything. We covered the dice. Covered the we dice, covered the box, the box covered all the modules. We didn't really uh, talk about the interior of the box. There's kind of a white paper inside there. Um, yeah, I don't think I don't think they need to know that kind of detail, John. I don't think anybody really cares. Okay. Well, I just, I wanted it to be complete, as complete as possible. Hopefully um, it's not a spoiler. Uh, I, I do want to mention, though, that uh, if you're in Atlanta, if you're coming to Momocon, or not, even if you're not coming to Momocon, uh, this Saturday night at Firemaker Brewing Company, there, there will be uh, a couple of us running some games, uh, Dying Earth-specific games, at uh, the brewery. And huh. uh, anybody who is dressed up in some sort of cosplay gets a discount on their tab. And this is in Atlanta? This is in Atlanta, yes. I wonder I, how I fast I could close the booth in uh, SF and get to Atlanta. Do you have a teleporter? Uh, not on me, no. No, I think I think you're out of luck. Hmm. But but half, half. That, what did you? You didn't say half. What did you say? A discount? No, no, no. I just said a discount. A discount. A Even discount. a discount. I'd yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, yeah. If I'm drink, if I'm playing at a brewery, I'm going to drink anyway, so I might as well get a discount, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. So you're doing that in uh, in the middle of the con. Um, that... It's it's Saturday night of of the con. This this coming Saturday night. Yes. Right. And then or there's the, more con the on like Sunday and yeah, Monday. And then, or and then there's more con on Sunday. Yeah. So it's going to be a yeah. long, long week. Yeah. Sunday morning at the at the booth, you know, make sure you if you're there, you know, go up to Dieter and, and talk to him really loudly. He'll love that. 
I see him writing messages to the hitman right now. I am. I'm Kill John. Get him. <laughs> trying to take out emo goth, man. <laughs> Two for one, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Just nuke the mind from orbit. <laughs> it's the only way to be sure. <laughs> Anyway, I think that's our episode, John. I think we're done. We're officially babbling at this point. It must be time that we're done. <laughs> but uh, we'll be back next week. Next week on Wednesday with some all sorts of other new stuff. Yeah, next week. Okay. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Everything's a spoiler. We can't actually tell you anything about this product. No, I swear. We really did read it. <laughs> we read it, but it's too spoilery. We can't tell you a thing. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you next time.